What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Truth Life Podcast. I'm your host, Tyron Johnson. And today we got my guy, Will Felder, on the podcast. Will is a guy that played out here with me in France. He's one of the better players in France. And uh, he plays like 30 <laughs> minutes down the road from me. I went against him a couple of years ago. And um, I respect this game so much. I was like, man, we got to get you on the podcast. So, Will, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. What's going on? Ain't hey, nothing, man. Just quarantining and chilling, bro. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. So, Will, man, just uh, give the viewers an introduction of who you are and uh, where you come from, a little bit about your career, or whatever the case may be, just a short rundown of exactly who you are so they can be familiar. Yeah, so my name is Will Felder. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, man. Um, grew up playing ball, played my college years in, the, in Ohio, in the mid, well, in the Midwest area. Played two years at St. Francis PA, then transferred to the uh, MAC Conference to Miami of Ohio. Played two years in the MAC with Miami of Ohio. Um, got got some all league. Got all league a couple years. Was never able to really win a lot, but I managed to do well individually and break into the to the overseas uh into the overseas arena. Started off in Holland my rookie season. Um, the next season came to France, and I swear I've been ever since. So. Got you, I got you. What What was the first team you came to in France? First team I played for in France was a uh, VCB Vendée Chalon Basket. Okay. It's uh, it was National One that year. We was in the National One. Uh, it was a it was a team that was supposed to be, you know, on paper one of the best team in the league. You know, we had um, we had. Two guys, we had two uh, two other foreign players, one Serbian guy, Georgi Petrovic, was supposed to be the best uh, the best Bosman in the league. And then we had uh, Rufan Kayempe, he playing Pro V now, you know him. Wow. And um, yeah, we just had, we had a good team, man. But the problem was that we had a bad coach. So we ended up having a rough <laughs> season. And we ended up fighting to stay in National One, but the team was was throwing their whole budget out on the on the roster, so it was a disaster. Man. The school, the, the the team was in the middle of nowhere. You know, that's where they make the butter at in France. You know, it's what they the logo that's on the butter is wow. on the floor there. Yeah, so it was tough, man. And I was coming from Holland. I was when I played in Holland my rookie season. I was twenty minutes outside of Amsterdam. And when I got to to France to uh, Chalon, it was the middle of nowhere, man. You're like I'm really overseas. You're like I'm really overseas now. <laughs> really overseas now, man. Right. Really overseas. That's, yeah. that's, that's interesting because that's how it kind of was for me. It was like I've always played in big cities. When I came to Blue Eye, this is the first mm-hmm. time I've played in a small city. And this city is not even that bad, but I'm used to playing near Brussels, uh, Kyoto, mm-hmm. Japan. In Greece, I was near Athens, so it was like I was. Ooh. I never felt like I was overseas. I always felt like I was on a paid vacation. So right, that's the first right. time where it was kind of tough for me, but I, you know, I, I've adjusted because I've been here for three years. But it's still difficult for me, you know. Definitely. So let me Definitely. ask you this, man. Um, it's a a question that I get asked a lot. A lot of guys don't know how to actually transfer to playing basketball internationally. Whenever you finished mm-hmm. college, what was your process? How did you seek out an agent? Did you seek out a team? Like, how did you go from college to Holland? Okay, so when I was in college, um, my coach, my my college coach, he played in Holland. You know, he was a player, and so he uh, he he had a, a agent that actually was his agent when he played pro in Holland. And so he connected me with his agent, you know, that was, so that was one agent that that was one resource that I had. And then, um, so my uncle, actually, my uncle is Charles Oakley. I didn't, you know, talk about it, but my uncle was Charles Oakley. So right. he was a, you know, he was a resource for me too, uh, coming out of school as far as talking to agents and, you know, how to go about stuff. Uh, oh, so, so, so it was, ba- you know, your coach helped you out a lot. Your college coach helped you out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the man. Yeah, he. I actually signed with the co- with the agent that he was with when he was playing. So oh, that's that's why that's, I ended up. Signing. That's amazing, man. Because um, yeah. you know, a lot of guys ask me 
about finding agents, but I never really, I never searched for agents searched for me. You know, my college right. coach, we didn't have like that type of relationship. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was the kid that came out of nowhere. So it's hard for me to help them. I just figured if I put up crazy numbers, they'll seek me. And that's what happened. So that's, that's definitely, that's definitely true. I, I actually had a lot of, yeah, a lot of contacts on Facebook that uh, senior year. Yeah, a whole lot of contacts on Facebook that I ended up re revisiting and re-talking to right. later down the line. So you have you ever changed agents or you stay with the same agent the whole time? I did change agents. I actually changed and uh, got with an agent that had hit me up on Facebook when I was in school. I ended up getting with them three three years down the line. And they were completely different. At that point, the agent, he, he had joined another person and grew an agency and, you know, things had evolved. But the, the initial contact was while I was in school over, over Facebook. Oh, gotcha. I always looked at those guys like spam. I was afraid. Of, <laughs> I was afraid. Of <laughs> so um, that's, 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 very, that's very, very interesting, man. Let's get into your game a little bit. When I played mm -hmm. against you, I just noticed, I know I had to go to sleep the night before. <laughs> you know, I, I had to make sure my coach would come to practice like, ah, oh, you got Felder tomorrow, huh? Hey, hey. <laughs> you know, the scouting report was real thick on you. You know, it just was like, you know, this guy, he's not going to stop. He's a bowling ball. Mm -hmm. what, where, did, where did you get your game? What do you model your game after? Who, who was like your inspiration whenever you playing basketball? Man, so I'm, I'm, I'm 29, man. My, my times when I was growing up, T Mac was my favorite player to watch, man. He, he was just smooth, you know. I was kind of growing into my body. I could see as a when I was young, I felt like my body would eventually get to be, you know, to a similar build to, like his. And I just loved this game. I loved how smooth it was. So initially. You know, I wanted to be that talented, you know, wing wing forward, small forward type of player. And mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I started growing into that physically. But then, you know, when I got to college, coaches, you know how they, when you get to college, mm -hmm. coaches is like, okay, you know, you was doing this in high school, but this is what you can bring to our table. You know what I'm saying? And for me, that was a... Um, Athleticism was what coaches saw in my game, what jumped out to the coaches in my game when I got to college. And so, you know, they started telling me, you know, get down in the post, mix it up, crash the boards, and all of that kind of stuff. And so from there, I was able to understand that, you know, for the for for eighty percent or more of the people that I would match up with, my advantage over them would probably be my athleticism. So I would, you know. I learned to just try to use use what I looked at as my strength, you know, against the player. And I knew that in order to do that, I had to have that motor. You know, I tried to, you know, just make it make it hard to keep up with me. Just, you know, feel, you know, do you stick to my strength, basically, right. so to speak. Gotcha. So how do you – I, I want to get into the mental aspect a little bit. It's like when you got good players like you – Pretty much every season, you're one of the top players in the league, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, you ended up on a uh, – well, in Pro B, you ended up on a bad team. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. How do you stay motivated when a team is not as successful? But you're personally, you know, having a great season, but the team is not as successful. How do you stay motivated to, you know, want to succeed as a team when yeah. you guys are struggling? So man, I got a lot of experience with that, man. That's that's gonna happen to me um, you know, a few times in my career now. And what I can say is that, man, to be honest with you, when I when it first happened to me, it was really hard for me to stay motivated, you know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, you get to the point where you're like, okay, what am I really playing for? You know what I mean? Not what am I playing for, but like you know, it gets to be re repetitive. You losing, you losing. You score twenty, you know, and you look like just a guy on a bad team scoring twenty, and you know, yeah, and yeah. nobody wants. And so I think that's really where I drove, where you know, where I drew motivation from. It's like, man, I don't want to be, you know, the loser in the situation. You know what I mean? Like you always hear people talk about how 
it's easy to control, you know, it's easy to control what you're doing, but when you can make everybody around you better, those are the best players. You hear it on ESPN, you hear it during games, that's all you hear if you pay attention. So I I was just, you know, I just took the mindset, okay, I figured out how to get myself where I wanted to go. You know, now I have to take on a, a bigger challenge, you know what I'm saying, in the season of trying to get my team where it needs to go, you know. Right, right, right. Which is, I mean, you know, it's tough to do, but, you right. know. That was one of my biggest adjustments this season. I was, you know, I wanted mm-hmm. to make sure I had a couple of guys that my game, we we didn't mesh. On the outside, it looked like everything's great, but on the inside, it's like. It'd be looking great, man. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be looking I'm, real good from yeah. the outside, bro. I'm struggling. I'm struggling, but that's, I was kind of happy a little bit with my season this season because everyone's going to get a good job. And I still was the leading scorer. It was first place. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so I, st- I found a way this year to, to take a step back and found, mm-hmm. find ways to, to how do I highlight their game? Mm-hmm. And whenever I got hot, whenever the game was on the line, that's when I try to make my mark on the game. That's when I try to show my talent. So that's right. You know, that's big. That's big. It looked man. like it ended up. It looked like it ended up working out, man. Yeah, because <laughs> you, man. This year I was like, Phew. yeah. This is one of my best. Is, yeah, yeah, man. I was watching, bro. Yeah. But um, you no know, one one issue with me, I would say, uh, oh, yeah, it's the issue. Me coming from the south, um, small mm-hmm. school. You know, moving to France. I come from. I come from an all black neighborhood. Everything around me was always all black. So right. coming here and someone telling me, you know, I'm very passionate, but my passion could look like frustration in France. They, they didn't accept yeah. it because they didn't understand my culture. How, right. did you, how did you adjust coming from Cleveland to playing in France? Mm-hmm. How did you adjust your person, your character pretty much? How did you integrate it with the coach and the players, because you know sometimes the local players, they have a strong, a strong wall up to where they don't Definitely. accept you all the time. So how, did you ever, did you ever dealt with that? Where you didn't feel like you was accepted? Yeah, I I definitely dealt with that, man. So luckily, lucky for me, my rookie, I dealt with it as soon as I got to to Europe. So my uh, my my rookie season. I was in Holland and I was on a team called ZZ Leiden. And, uh, you know, nowadays you'll catch them in Euro Challenge or, I mean, your Euro uh, Basketball Champions, those different types of leagues. When I was playing there, we did, we, it was just a year that they had skipped. I, I guess they wanted to save money, whatever the case. But anyway, it was a lot of good players, local players on that team. Mm-hmm. And I was a rookie, you know, and I was an all-league player coming out of the MAC. You know, I was thinking that I was going to come to Europe and, you know, I was thinking I was going to, you know, impose my will, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a guard on that team named Worthy De Young. He was one of the best players in, in, in the Euro Challenge the year before. I mean, really athletic guard, just could really score the ball. There was the defensive player the year in Holland the year before was also on that team. There was a seven footer there that was shooting 40 plus percent from three. And so there, I was actually surrounded by, and then there was, I have, I don't, I don't know if you heard Maurice Creek was one of the better shooters coming from the States around my age. He played at George Washington. Like it was a lot, like that team just had so many weapons on it that, I had to just learn, you know, I just had to learn that, yo, like this is, you know what I'm saying? This is a, I mean, this is professional basketball, you know, this is, you coming in their country, you're in their world, mm-hmm. and you know, you have to, you have to learn how to adjust. Now, I had also seen that same year, other American rookies in the, in the Dutch basketball league get fired. And I had heard through the grapevine that a lot of that was coming from, them bumping heads with players and coaches. And I always been the type of guy to try to listen and learn from other people's mistakes. And so, you know, I was just soaking in everything that I was hearing, you know, looking at my personal situation and I'm like, okay, you know, I got to really, I got to be careful with the way that I approach, you know, or, you know, I got to, I got to adapt myself to, to what's going on in my situation. 
but not get at the same time, not give ground, you know, I got to stay, you know, I got to make my presence be felt and, you know, do what I do. But at the okay. same time, I got to take into account, you know, the situation. Got you. That, yeah. that, that's, that's interesting, man. I hear those stories all the time and it's always, it's always some type of fresh story where somebody had a different experience. But mm -hmm. uh, let's go to um, what's the end goal right now? Right now you signed in tours. And Taurus friends, mm -hmm. beautiful city. What, yeah. What's the, like, you know, when I came out of college, my goal was to go to the NBA. Then it was Definitely. like, I want to play EuroLeague. And then it was like, all right, I want the most money. Now it's like, right. okay, now I'm preparing for life after basketball. I'm probably going to be a coach. So it's mm -hmm. like, now, now I'm playing. I don't care about wins and losses. I'm just, I'm giving everything to the game and letting the results handle itself. And if we mm -hmm. win, great, but it's more of building relationships. Right. You know what I'm saying? In case I might want to be an agent. I don't know. <laughs> but right. I'm building those oh, relationships. You. So what's the end goal mm -hmm. now for you now that you, you're 29, right? 29, yep. What's the goal now Now that you're, you know, in tours, you got the security? What's the yep. goal? So it's funny, man. That's a funny question right now, given the, the fact that we're sitting in quarantine. Because I've been having a lot of time to think about that. And I'm also, you know, 29 approaching that, like, milestone 30 mm -hmm. year. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I think, you know, because I've been sitting thinking about that a lot. And, like, I'm not – I didn't necessarily get to the level that I wanted to, you know, as far as playing. Like, I want – like you said, you want to go to the NBA. You want to go to Euro League. Me, personally, I never played in – um a top league quote unquote you know what i'm saying besides besides holland i never played in like the first league in the country and i always felt that i was able you know that i had the ability to play in those places later on down the line i started realizing that man it's a combination of you know relationships with agents and timing and money and this and that you know and so i, I was like okay well you know i just have to control what i can control and then that comes to like what you're saying, like in the leagues where I play and where I do manage to, you know, where I where I where I tend to play at, I just try to dominate there. And now I got to the point where I'm pretty comfortable, you know what I mean? Like if I get opportunities to play in higher leagues, that that'd be great. But I don't feel as though I, you know, I'm I don't feel as I feel as though I've shown, you know, that what I can do on the court, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily in terms of levels, but in terms of what I what I do when I get on the court, you know what I mean. And so now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, how do I transition? I'm on the I'm on the other side of the hill. How do I start transitioning, slowly transitioning, and getting ready to eventually, you know, step out of the game? If I think for me, you know, I want to coach too in college, and um, I don't want to be, you know, 38 just trying to jump into a starter, you know starting level position in the coaching staff where you know what I mean like where you do I mean and I mean that very well can happen you know when you first jump into a staff or whatever the case so I want to give myself a little time to grow in that aspect too you know what I mean so I mean my year my years playing basketball they'll be you know they'll I'm on the definitely on the other side of the hill but now I'm just starting to put other things in place you know to to make that transition smooth and i wanted to you know judge talking about that too also this time i've been using to really to really pay attention to finances and what's going on you know financial literacy all of these things that i'm seeing on instagram and you know in the media and stuff now about finances and stuff like that you never really you know i never thought about that stuff when i right, when i was right. playing basketball that's not really you know, I'm focused on basketball, but now it's like those things kind of jumped at me. And that's a sign. I was a sign to me, too. Like, wow, this stuff is really meaning something to me. Like, I must, you know, I can see where my mind is going. Right. So mm -hmm. that's another question. You know, my truth brand is about people. I ca it's called take respect until freedom. And freedom is like, you know, for me, doing what you love to do all the time. Mm -hmm. Not doesn't even matter the paycheck. So do you got anything else going on outside of basketball that you can let us know about? So I'm I, 
nothing nothing concrete yet but i've been actually i've been using this time man to i'm um, in the process of trying to build and grow an e-commerce brand i've been like, also like merchandise like, yeah like a merchant well not not really clothes but yeah merchandise like a product watches okay. well watches is the product that i'm working on and um yeah so i'm working on that and then I'm working on, you know, I've been putting a lot of time into learning, uh, into learning about the stock market. I actually been doing a little bit of options trading. I already used to trade. I started trading Forex about two years ago. So, I mean, I always kind of had the interest in work, you know, using my time outside of the basketball court to learn how to create, you know, money on the side and things like that. But this time it really gave me a chance to, really jump into that stuff and it's been fun because you know you can really i can really zero in on it you know it's not like i'm you know i'm at the gym all day and all night and then when i get home i don't really you know i'm not gonna put five hours on into that you know what i'm saying necessarily I'm, I'm, I'm resting i'm eating i might be watching film watching basketball games you know all this kind of stuff you know? right how's that um forex um, I, I had mixed reviews about it. I did it a little bit. It's it's not for mm -hmm. me, but how how is it? Uh, how do you like doing that? It was so it's man, it's it's rough. You know, like it takes time to really, it, it takes time, man, to really get to where you can be consistently profitable in it. Now, when I got involved in it, I was more so involved in a community of people. Uh -huh. One one expert leading the community. And everybody was kind of, you know, following him, so to speak, like listening to his advice and, you know, doing what he was doing. And uh, I took it upon myself to just try to, you know, figure out how to do it on my own. So I ended up putting a lot of time in on YouTube and online academies and different stuff like that. A lot of time and money, man. Yeah. And so, you know, I done got to the point now where I know how to read charts. You know, I know how to you know, find patterns in the market and this and that, but it, I'm still trying to, you know, put in work to really like refine, you know, that's a skill that take time and money, obviously, you know, to refine. So I just been trying to be patient with that. Gotcha, man. Last mm -hmm. question before we get in our truth questions. The truth question is the last, the last five questions of the day. It's like a, like a gunshot question, like back to back. Yes. But, um, are you, are you a Christian? Yeah, I am a Christian. So how does God, because I, I, this is the self-confidence, I feel like a person that's you know, a Christian or religious, they use God to you know, take them to that next level. How, mm -hmm. does, how does God impact the way you go about life? Man, he, impact, he impact the way I go about life a lot, man. And I mean, I think that like, you know, people use the word karma, uh, to me, karma is, to me, karma is God, you know, like, I feel as though, you know, when somebody says, oh, that's, you know, bad karma or karma is going to catch up to you, oh. you know, to, to me, to me, karma is God, to me, karma is God catching I up to I you. I never heard that one, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, yeah, I don't, you know, people say karma, you know, but for me, karma is God, you know, not that karma is God, but I think I look at it as God reaching into your life and, you that's know, amazing. teaching that's you amazing. a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, it's like, for, for me, it's like, um, I'm not religious at all, but uh, mm -hmm. my self-confidence is, I think it's the key to everything in my life. And I, mm -hmm. I, I developed that through like experiences and just paying attention to my surroundings. So I try my best to help uh, not not only players, but people just find that Michael Jordan confidence. You mm -hmm. know, some people use God, some people use their experiences, some people are born mm -hmm. with it. You know, so definitely, I just always like to ask that question to see how they can get that that confidence up. But mm -hmm. um, it's a truth life question, man. The last five questions. Uh, the logo stands for Take Respect Until Freedom. Mm -hmm. So we, we'll start with Take. What was a moment in your life, or let's say your basketball career, where you felt like you had to take advantage of this opportunity? Like, it's either this or this can take me to the next level. So that opportunity is easy for me to identify. That was 
when I got to, so when I left St. Francis, PA, you know, that was considered, you know, that, well, probably, well, they was in, they'd be in the conference championship nowadays, but at the time I was considered more so like a, um, a low major division one school. And I was putting, you know, I was in on the off freshman or the conference team and everything. And I was, you know, I was doing well there but we weren't doing well as a team. And I was able to get to Miami of Ohio in the MAC, which was a step up, you know, as far as getting to like the mid-major level, better players, you know, it was DJ Cooper. Like Ohio was going to the um, Sweet 16 at that time when I got to the MAC. So that was, uh, you know, that was a big step up as far as competition level and stage was concerned. And I felt like when I got there, I felt like it was sink or swim, you know. So I felt like, okay, this is my opportunity where I either have to take this and run with it. It's going to get me where I want to go or it's going to show people that, yeah, they was right. Like when I was in high school, I shouldn't have been the one. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have been, you know, nothing. like that. I so, like that. Yeah. What does um, respect look like to you? When you think about respect, what is that, what is that to you? To me, respect is when, I mean, when – when you look at somebody or when somebody look at you and they can say that, you know, what you're doing, you, you know, and they can see, they can see value in what you're doing, what you bring to the table and what you represent. To me, that's, that's respect. And it, I mean, sometimes you gotta, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's respect can be complicated, you know what I mean? Because sometimes it might not necessarily mean that you like the person or that the person like you and things like that, but, at the end of the day, if you can look at somebody and, you know, see value in what they're doing, what they represent, so bring value. That, to me, that's respect, yeah. Bringing value is respect. I tell it to guys all the time. Bring value. You could be the biggest jerk on the team, but if you bring in value, yeah. they're going to respect it. You can't be, can't, the jerk. It. can't be the jerk in average in five. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely, definitely. You know what I'm saying? You can't, uh, you can't be putting, you can't be making the rookies do do jobs, and then you you averaging two more points than them. Right. I mean, you look <laughs> at the documentary, the uh, the Last Dance, and you hear people talk about Jordan, you hear talk about Kobe. A lot of them say they was jerks, but you had to respect them. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Man. So the third word is um until. Uh, what do you think about until? Is the journey basically? Like my mm -hmm. journey was up and down and all over the place. What do you, how, how do you think that shaped your character? Like going from the bottom, going to the top, maybe going back down. I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know the journey like that, but how do you feel about those wins and losses? How did that shape who you are today? Man, that, 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 that's huge because like, yeah, I mean, that, that's really a hundred percent of what shaped me really because I've always, me personally, I've always came from kind of an underdog perspective. Even in my in my state in high school, I played in the lowest division with the smaller schools. Like I, my graduated high school class was about fifty people, you know, and so I, I had to make seven. People, wow, <laughs> that's that's and, hey, that's the first time I heard somebody throw out a number lower than mine. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> but yo yeah man so I was that guy that you know people was like oh he's not playing no competition you know this that, and the third he's not you know right, and then when I got to college it was the same thing oh low level you know mid or uh, low major school you know I mean it was just always that it was always that and then I my so you know the situation with my uncle being Charles Oakley, that was something too. People was always look, okay, what is this Oakley's nephew? What he, what is he gonna look like? You know, like I just was always in the position where I had to, you to know, prove yourself. Yeah, prove you to, myself. You had to make him pay. <laughs> yeah, I had to make him pay, man, for sure. <laughs> I had to make him pay. Gotcha, bro. So last thing is the most important thing for me um, is freedom. What's freedom to you? Like when, when, when would you know? Like, okay, I feel totally free. What, what would, what would it take? It would just, it would take for me to be able to wake up every morning and just do what, do what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. You know, like that to me, that's freedom. And to be honest with you, I've been free for most, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been, I've played a, I've been a basketball player my whole life, you know, since I was five or six. All I've ever did was play basketball. I played in college, and now I'm playing pro. 
you know, but I'm, I mean, obviously we all have family members and different people who we interact with, who their story is completely different. I mean, my father is a Vietnam veteran, you know what I mean? He went through Vietnam, he got a purple mm -hmm. heart at 19 years old. He was laying in the hospital with, a, you know, with a gunshot wound, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, in another country. So like I have a, you know, and I mean, my family is from down south from Alabama. So I've just got a perspective where, you know, when I look at my life in comparison to the people around me and my family and friends, I can honestly say that it's been, you know, it's been pretty free in my opinion. My thing is I got to keep it that way. Right, right, right. I got to work to keep it that way. Gotcha, man. Well, man, thanks for your time, bro. I know I tried to catch you yesterday, but got caught up. I had um, some other stuff. Today you're working, man. Hey, you <laughs> hey, you a man of many facets, man. You do a lot, man. Sure, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to cut some of it down, man. It's like I do too much. <laughs> hey, man, you do a lot, man. I was like, I was looking, I was looking at that. I'm like, dang, man, this dude's creating all of this. Like, how is he doing all this in yeah, basketball? It's a lot. That's what I'm like, saying, man, bro. You're talented. Most people, I, you, man, yeah, you. I, I don't, I don't run across a lot of guys that really, you know, do a lot. You know, in this in this capacity, as far as the content and stuff like this, and, yeah. and play basketball, I was impressed. I'm like, wow, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I try to call myself the Gary V of basketball. You know. Hey, you got it. You got it, man. Yeah, the only difference it. is he got a team. I actually have to create all the graphics. <laughs> I have to do all the recording, all the video, all the photography, everything. But you know, hey, I spent I ten years it. learning how to do that stuff. So. I was gonna say I can only imagine what kind of time you put in to learn how to how to how to work all of this stuff. I I, I listened to your one. Uh, I think it was a video or episode where you was talking about all the money you spent on your equipment. I was like, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I was like, yeah, man. He locked it. He hey, yeah. he he's serious about that stuff. Man. Yeah, man. That's why I stopped the forex stuff. And even like I stopped. I was about to invest in like real estate and stocks and stuff. I'm like, bro, I really make faster money, more money when I invest in myself. So That's I amazing. just invest in the best cameras. I invest in this mic. It's like two grand, bro. So, yeah, I, I remember. I remember <laughs> you saying that. I'm like, man. Yeah. So I he just, got a, a car yeah. sitting in his room. <laughs> like that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like wow. Yeah, man. But bro, thanks a lot, man, for for, for joining the, the the podcast. Like I said, man, got major respect for your game. Respect as a person, even more today, hearing your story, man. Uh, got to keep in contact, bro. You know, my, my brother lives up in uh, Middletown, Ohio. So what? Uh, yeah, Middletown, Ohio. I was supposed to do a camp um, at the YMCA up there. So I was trying. I was supposed to get down there this summer. I don't know if I'm gonna make okay. it now, but right. Definitely got to link up sometimes, man. Yeah, man. I really enjoyed, man. I really enjoyed you having me. I appreciate it a lot, man. All right, man. Thanks, man. I'll hit you up. Yep. All right, boss.